Hi there, I'm Ms. Artastic, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking about what I wish I knew as a first year art teacher. Yes, so let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. teacher but what I really mean is what I wish I knew as a new art teacher so whether you're in your first year second year third year this is really going to be what I wish I knew as a new art teacher I wish that somebody had taken the time to tell me so I'm gonna tell you just so that way uh, I feel like I feel like these are things that people need to know before when they're in the in the in the, in the moment um, and when they're new. Now, if this is your first year or if you're a new teacher, make sure you hit that like button so we can see how many people are new or first year teachers. I'm so excited to see that. How many people are entering this grand new journey? All right, number one is when you're a new art teacher or your first year art teacher, the first thing I would prioritize is focusing on creating community. So focus on your community builders, getting to know your students, and really creating community and connection in your classroom. I would spend the first two months integrating this into your lessons or into your warm-ups in the morning, or not in the morning, but at the start of class, um, and just really making it a, a, a top of mind um, thought that you're gonna put in the effort to really focus on creating community because it's going to make your life easier for the rest of the year that way it's gonna make it your time it's gonna make your life easier for the rest of the year right so i would really just spend the time and take that extra time just to focus on creating community it's so important because if you guys have that no trust with each other in the classroom right your students know you they trust you you have earned their respect right you have taken the time to earn their trust and to earn their respect Notice that I put the earn in there. You need to earn it. It's not expect. It's not expectation, right? You need to earn it. And then also you give them trust and respect and you get to know each other. It's going to inform your entire year, right? Because, um, well, now you have a solid foundation to work on, right? Because when kids know and trust and feel safe and comfortable, they're more willing to learn and participate and engage. Um, so that's one thing. Um, it's proactive classroom management, right? Because now you can... You're, you're proactively working. It's proactive classroom management because when kids know and trust you, they're gonna to want to engage and participate and try the work, right, and learn from you. Whereas if they don't know you, um, it's kind of hard to do that, right? And you see that sometimes with subs when they come in, right? Kids kind of sometimes don't really respond well to substitutes because they don't know them, they don't trust them, they're like strangers, right? They're like, who is this person? And why are they telling you what to do? And that's. And that's why you see a lot of unfortunately, this sucks that them have to that this is the reality. But so and I've been there, I've been a sub for many years because where I am, where I live, every teacher is a sub until they get a contract, right? So everybody experiences being a sub. So um which is a good experience also. Anyways, um so anyway. My point is, is that it's very important to focus on community and be proactive with classroom management that way because you're going to avoid a lot of things if you have that no trust um, factor built in, right? So create community is the very first thing. And I think that I bypassed that uh, when I was a new teacher because I thought, oh my gosh, we gotta get into learning, let's go. And then, you know, things unraveled. <laughs> so, because there was no, they're like, who's this person? Why should you teach? Why should you make me jump through all these hoops? And the other thing, number four, is if you know and trust them, you will know their interests, right? And then you can plan your learning and the artworks and what you're going to teach around their interests. And they're going to be like, what? This teacher read my mind. I want to make Star Wars art, for example. Don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying to make it a whole art like, you know, around Star Wars, but I'm just saying. Just came out first thing on top of my head. All right, number two is to get to know the kids who show unexpected behavior the most. Um, so like truly show them you care. So any of those kids that you're like, oh my gosh, that, those are the kids that are gonna, you know, are tending, typically the ones that show unexpected behavior, they're a little bit more challenging. Um, those are the students that you're gonna really focus on getting to know, 
creating that positive connection, learning about them, asking about their day and what happened, you know. Did you guys, what did you do after school? Oh, I got pizza. Awesome, what flavor did you get? I love cheese pizza too. Like, whatever. Like, totally vibe with them um, and get to know them very well. Um, and because you're, you're gonna, they need to be able to trust you the most, right? They're not gonna, some kids just automatically, automatically come in and they like trust the adult. And they're like, yeah, I love my teacher, day one. I love my teacher. But not all kids are like that. And for whatever personal reason that they have experienced, there's not automatically a trust, respect thing there. So um, get to know those students the most because then once you have that um, trust thing, it's a lot easier to engage them and ha have them participate. You'll know where they struggle and you can you know, bring them in, do some more small group instruction and help them a little more, right? So before they get frustrated and you know deteriorate emotionally, um, in your classroom, right? You'd be like, oh, I know that person's getting a little frustrated. Hey, you wanna come work with me? Let's do it together, right? <laughs> Let's do it together, no problem, I'll help you. Um, and then you can chit chat, right? And then you can calm down, right? So it's being, about pro it's being more proactive with classroom management than reactive, like, oh, they are already in the red zone. I've ignored them all day because I've been avoiding them because I'm scared or whatever, I'm nervous. And now there is a disaster in my room, things are being ripped up and boom. Now you still might get that, but hopefully it's a lot less um, with some more active approaches as well. When your administrator says, well, what have you done yourself to avoid this or help the student? You'd be like, well, I've been really focusing on proactive classroom management approaches. I've been focusing on building relationships and, and earning their trust and respect. I spend a lot of time, I do small group or one-on-one -on -one working with them to try to support them, um, blah, 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 blah. I adapt their lessons or expectations, whatever it is, right? So you can go list all that off beforehand and you're like, see, I, you know, then they'll see that, hey, you have been really trying your very hardest, right? So maybe that student needs to come the rest of the way. <laughs> all right, so um, my question for you uh, is, what questions do you have about being an art teacher? Um, let me know in the comment section below the video and then I will do my best to personally respond. Number three is do more experimentation and learning over art projects after art projects. So sometimes we're like so panicked that we have to go, okay, we do art project, art project, art project, art project, let's go, 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 get it done, get it done, more, 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 more. Um, which is gonna stress you out because that's a lot and then you have to assess all of that. Maybe just turn off my heater. Anyways, so you have to assess all that. Um, and, um, what was I saying? You're not giving, oh yeah, students are not having the opportunity to experiment and learn. So what is best is that you do more experimentation, you introduce whatever you're about to teach, you know, whatever you're learning right now, introduce, experiment and play based exploration projects, another exploration, work, right, whatever it is. Um, day one, they're like experimenting with t different types of line. Day two, they are, you know, creating a line art master doodle. They're just experimenting, right? And then day three, now we're going to start an art project, right? So we're going to do more experimentation where you're just practicing, learning, understanding. You're doing teaching, maybe you're reading books that are related, looking at artists, artwork. Um, you're doing that for a few classes and then you start your art project where they show they know. But you need to give them time to learn and play and experiment and try the new techniques and skills before you just throw them into an art project and expect them to perform. Now you're not going to assess for marks, the practice stuff, right? You're going to do formative assessment, right? Where you're taking notes and you're looking for progress and, and you're also trying to see, okay, are they ready to move on to this art project or should we spend more time experimenting and practicing, right? Like, do, does everybody know? Is everybody ready to move on? If not, maybe we need another day or I should do some one-on-one -on -one or small group instruction to help all the students who are behind to make sure we're all at the same level. And then once we're all good, next, I think I feel like they're comfortable and they're ready to move on. Now I'm gonna do my art project, okay? So now I'm gonna teach you art work. Um, you're gonna walk, walk, walk them through it or do more self-directed stuff, whatever you're doing. Depends on your grades, right? Um, and where you're at in the year. <laughs> and then that is their show what they know. So now they're gonna show you what they have learned, what they understand, how they can do it, all their techniques, their skills. They're gonna show you what they know and that's what you're gonna do your more formal assessment, summative assessment on. All right, 
Next, number four is you don't have to assess everything. So notice how I said you do not need to take grades on those first things, right? You do not need to give a mark for absolutely every single piece of thing that they do. So only, I would only give like, you know, I can give it, I can give verbal assessment, right? I can give them ver verbal feedback, or, you know, if I'm doing small group instruction, I'd be like, wow, blah, 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 that's great. Maybe next time you can work on this um, when we're experimenting. Um, then at the very end, now that's when you give your actual grades or marks or whatever your district is doing. Um, at my, we have gotten rid of grades where I live. Um, who knows? They might come back one day. I don't know. But there's no grades. <laughs> so this, so I we did. Now we don't. Um, so what I'm saying is to whatever you assess and however you mark, then you're going to do it your, for whatever makes sense for where you are. Um, anyways. And uh, yeah, I think that's just the, the, the thing to think about. Um, so don't have to, you don't have to give a, a mark, a grade for every piece of work they produce. Some can be for the learning process, right? They need to have the opportunity to learn before you're marking on them. Then you can give them a mark on their show what they know. All right, number five is only you will know, my very best piece of advice that I was given from another teacher is that you're the only person that's gonna know that you did not complete your to-do list. I know we all have our to-do list. Like I have my to-do list, endless to-do lists all over the place, my post-it notes all over my walls. You're the only person that's gonna know that you did not finish your to-do list. So it's okay, you don't have to stay till seven o'clock every night doing all the things. Go home, that's my advice, go home. You're the only person that's gonna know that you didn't get it done. It's okay, it'll be there for you tomorrow. You can finish marking tomorrow, it's fine, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It happens. You need to have a life. I used to stay so late in my first year every single day and then also go in super early and then stay very early and then stay like till seven o'clock. And my praise principal was like, you need to go home. And I'm like, no, I need to be, I need to be show, show how much I'm dedicated. And honestly, nobody cared that I did that. It did not make me a better teacher. I was tired. I was overworked. The district wasn't like, oh, pat on the back. You're so amazing. That never happened. So don't, don't waste your time doing that because it's not gonna get you anywhere. You're gonna be exhausted and you're not gonna be present and available to your students during the hours that it matters. You need to go home, you need to have a life. Go in early, I like to go in early, right, you know, a few hours before school started, do all my planning and prepping there and that way after the, when the bell goes, I just go home. Yeah, because I already did put in hours of planning time outside of my working time and planning time. So that's very fair. And my principal would see me, they'd be like, oh yeah, look at you're here, here when I'm here. Wow, look at that. That's cool. Um, so that's what I would suggest to do is to go in earlier than later. And also don't spend your whole life doing that in your weekends. My friend, it will be there tomorrow. It's okay. All right, my friend, your next video to watch is how, uh, Teaching Art to Kindergarten. So if you want to learn about Teaching Art to Kindergarten, please click the link above or in the description below the video. Um, as well, if you are looking for some art teacher professional development, I do have a course, a professional development course called Art Teacher Academy. It is my art teacher program that's going to help you with everything from lesson planning to planning your scope and sequence. And I'll also give you all the templates for that. Um, classroom management, um, I'm going to talk about increasing your student participation. I'm going to give you my engagement strategies. Um, I'm going to talk about productivity um, and your time management, your classroom management. And I'm also going to help you with communication all in my Art Teacher Academy Professional Development Workshop. It is my online course and will walk you through all of these things to take you from being stressed out and overwhelmed to being a happier, calmer, stress-free you. I'm so excited to be able to offer our Teacher Academy to teachers. They are 10 different video courses, sorry, lessons, um, that all have workbooks to go with it so you can work through my course at your own pace. Um, so you can work through it at your own pace. And then, um, 
and at a time that works best for you with your schedule. Uh, and then you also get unlimited access to the course. So lifetime unlimited access to the course once you purchase it. So don't worry, you can go back and rewatch it and redo the lessons as many times as you need, as well as have access to all the resources that are included. And if you join, you also get the free, I'm um, sorry, you also get included for free um, my art teacher creation toolkit to give you some art lessons to help you get started in your planning. Um, so if you want to check it out, you can click the or scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description of this video or go on Google and search Art Teacher Academy to help you get started. I'm so excited for Offer It and I hope to see you in that course. You do get 10 professional development hours for completing the course and a certificate of completion when you complete it. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. That will help me allow, that will allow me to continue and it'll help me, but allow me to continue to create these videos for you. So please make sure you like and subscribe and share this video so that I can continue to do this for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.